So here we are having a look at the engine at Bancroft. This is a cross compound, 500 indicated horsepower cross compound. That's the barring engine, which would move the engine into starting position and also um, move it for maintenance. So here we are having a look at the crank. So this moves, this basically transfers the forward and backward motion of the connecting rod piston into rotary motion. So that's the connecting rod with small end, cross head and cross head slide at the bottom. Now we're having a look at the eccentrics. So these open and shut the coilless valves. So you've got inlets and exhaust with the eccentric rods coming off them, with the aquarium in the middle, oiling the main bearing. Here's the governor. This is a Lums type governor. Originally it had a whitehead governor fitted. Then you've got the Lums speed regulator. This basically evened out any um, speed adjustments on the engine when it was running under load. Originally it was running with about 1000 to 1100 Lancia looms. So you've got cross head, cross head slide, small end of the connecting rod, piston rod to the left and the valve rockers. So basically that connects the eccentric rods to the valve rods which operate the cordless valve gear. So you've got main steam pipe coming into the high pressure cylinder, small pipes for an engine looking back towards the boiler so now they run off a Cornish but originally it was a Lancia boiler which is still in position just not used anymore this is the metallic packing so metallic packing goes around the piston rod forms a seam tight seal high pressure cylinder with cordless valve caps you've got two pressure relief valves and a globe lubricator in the middle of them Tail rod slide on the high pressure side. This basically holds away the uh, piston on the um, on the engine, evens out anywhere in the uh, in the cylinder. So a general view of the engine with the low pressure on the left and high pressure on the right. High pressure cylinder, main steam valve that's open to let steam into the high pressure cylinder, which uh, starts the engine off. So high pressure cylinder. So inlet valves on the top and exhaust valves on the bottom, dash pots um, at a diagonal either side that dampens the valves when they're shutting with the catch block and catch rods in the middle as well so that's sorted by the governor, you can see the rods connected to the base of the governor so another view of the governor and in a minute another view of the LUMS speed regulator which I will add a clip of um, running so, eccentric rods and eccentric. So, here's the gauge board. Top gauge is the vacuum gauge. Bottom right is the pressure gauge from the boiler. And next to it is the compound steam gauge. So, maker's plate. Engine was built by William Roberts of Nelson. So, looking at the low pressure side. So, you've got, again, valve rockers for the eccentric uh, rods and valve rods. Eccentrics in the distance on the uh, main crankshaft on the low pressure side with flywheel with uh, ropes so a low pressure small end piston and uh, cross head slide here's a low pressure cylinder so again inlet valves on the top exhaust valves on the bottom and dash pots in between the uh, vertical with the rods coming out so they dampen the valve shutting and stop any hammering of the valves. See so low pressure exhaust valves on the bottom. So on a cylinder like this, the on the right is the front, on the left is the back of the cylinder. So catch block and plates on the low pressure and high pressure. They trip the valves, which you'll be able to see on a, on a later clip. So now we're going over towards the low pressure tail rod slide with the air pump rocker in uh, in green. So again as a high pressure this supports the weight of the piston and evens out anywhere. So you can see the uh, connection there. 
that's looking down towards the air pumps which you'll be able to see in a later clip not an area normally seen by the public so uh, exhaust pipe coming out of the cylinder there from the low pressure down to the condenser and the low pressure side looking at connecting rod crank flywheel with second motion shaft at the top so that transferred the power off to the right into the weaving shed and through line shafting I will include a video from Queen Street Mill which shows that to good effect um, no William Roberts engine but a tandem ram and a cross compound so you can see the ropes going up so here's a closer look at the cylinder valve gear so steam enters at the front left inlet port and air sits through the back right exhaust port and enters the low pressure zone through the compounded pipe steam then enters through the back inlet and goes out through the front exhaust it then goes through the exhaust pipe on the back of the cylinder that we saw in the previous clip and enters the condenser on this it's a jet condenser the that condenses the steam entering and creates a vacuum we'll explain that a bit more in a later clip so you can see on this the, the valve actuator dash pot rod and dash pot I'll put in some photos and one some leaf spinners so you can have a close look at the cordless valve so again on the high pressure you've got the valve actuator with the catch rod and the uh, catch block in the centre so we'll see this working on a uh, further clip so you've got the exhaust at the bottom
So, here's a look at the air pump. So, steam enters the condenser at the rear from the exhaust from the low pressure, which is the pipe coming down at the rear. It's condensed in the condenser via an injection of cold water. That creates a vacuum which helps pull the piston as well as the steam pushing it. The water is then drawn out of the condenser via the coffin at the bottom via the foot valve. So that creates a vacuum tight seal. The water you can see is then pushed out through the overflow. That would originally run back to the and I'll show you.